welcome to Happy Chick. Today we're going to be brewing up an interesting wine. It is rose petal wine. Yep, rose petal wine. Um, these petals are from my mom's rose bushes. So I had them in the freezer until I was ready to make this. I gathered up about 10 ounces of fresh rose petals. Now, if you don't have access to fresh rose petals, you can use dried rose petals. And so you would need about half of what fresh calls for. So if I have 10 ounces, then you would need about five ounces of dried rose petals. Um, and you can probably order those on like eBay, Amazon, you know, whatever. But um, I had access to fresh, so I took advantage of that. <laughs> So we got the rose petals. Um, I just pulled them out of the freezer, kind of letting them warm up just a little bit. We're gonna be pouring hot water over them anyway, so it doesn't matter that they're frozen. They'll warm up, so, you know, it'll be all good. But we do need to get sugar into our uh, Demijohn. And then I got some sugar, just plain white sugar today. I don't need my funnel. It should fit in there. It's been humid and hot, so I do have some chunkies, but that's okay. All right, so we're gonna measure out two and a half pounds. I'm gonna do two and a half pounds. Let me write that down. Two and a half pounds of sugar. There we go. Two and a half pounds. Okay, and I just dumped that all over me. Figures, 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 right? <laughs> okay. Definitely don't want that in there yet. So that's all the sugar. I do have some water that just came off the boil. So I'm going to put that in now um, so I can get the sugar dissolved and then we'll get the rose petals in. Put the lid on so I don't splash myself. I'm going to swirl this for a little bit because I don't want to burn my hands because it's hot. Shake it until it all dissolves. I figured it'd be easier to see it before, you know, I start throwing in the rose petals and the tea bags and all that if we dissolve the sugar first. All right, we're going to also add um, one black tea bag. Like I said before, uh, that helps a little bit, uh, a little bit of the mouthfeel, some tannins, since there's you know, from the, the leaves, and a little bit of lemon juice. That'll bring a little bit of acidity, acidity, acidity yeah, to the uh, wine. So we're going to go ahead and chuck that in. And the tea bag in. And then let's go ahead and start chucking these uh, rose petals in. Mmm. Big old clump. <laughs> now, when I picked these, I picked these right after my work, so it was like pitch black when I picked them, <laughs> and raining too. Uh, it was like, get them now or never. It's a big chunk. They're sticking to me now, too. And all I did was I just rinsed them in a colander just to make sure there was no buggies or, you know, things like that. And uh, just picked them off of the green uh, stamens and stuff like that. Uh, but if you have a couple, it's not going to hurt. Here, here I am yapping and you can't even hear me. You can't even see me. My face is... A hand in my face. All right. Just a little bit more. This will turn a pretty pink, I think. At least I hope it will. Now, you can make these with any rose petals that you want. Red, pink. Um, there's orange roses. My mother has a an orange rose. But it only produces a couple of roses at a time, so I'll be like collecting them forever. 
pink's probably the most popular. Now, if you make them out of white roses, it probably won't turn, you know, pink or anything like a rosé pinky color. So just fair warning. You can make them, so. And you want to pick roses that have that rosy smell. You know how some roses don't have that rosy smell? You want them to have that rosy smell because you're extracting that smell, flavor, you know, profile. So you definitely want that. Okay. I think that's good. There's a few, few pieces in there, but me. Okay. Let's get them all in here, and then we're going to give this another shake. Did I spill any? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and add some cool water to the mix to cool that off so that we can add our yeast in. And this is just cool filtered water. be pretty I think isn't that pretty with just the rose petals in there okay so this is gonna be on the high side I know it is this is that one uh, 1.140 it's on the high side isn't it wow okay but that's what my calculation said that it would make. So, we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I've got my tea bag in. I've got my lemon juice in. Let's just throw this yeast in. Half package of Lavin EC1118. And then we're going to give it one more shake a Then we'll put an um, airlock on her, uh, label her, and then give her some time. And we'll check back with her. And there we go. Okay. I'm going to put her someplace in the dark because I have her that the rose petal color is sensitive to light. So if I want to keep that pinky hue, um, I need to uh, keep it covered. So I'm gonna actually wrap this in a, um, a tea towel while it's brewing to uh, eliminate any light. Uh, where I keep my brews, it's pretty dark anyway, but you know, just in case, um, I'm going to cover her with a tea towel and that way it'll protect her uh, from the light. So, rose petal wine coming up. We'll check back with her in a little bit. Now, I transferred her into my fermentation bucket after I put all of that into my demijohn and I realized I'm an idiot because I barely had any equipment. <laughs> It's like, oh, I'm not even going to get a half gallon of wine out of this one. So I moved it over to the um, uh, fermentation bucket, and I did add some filtered water to it um, to raise it back up to, you know, make sure that I was getting close to, closer to a gallon of wine than I would have normally. So I did that off camera because it's like, yeah, I just kind of, bloop, you know, into a bucket. Um, and I think... I think I did do a uh, specific gravity. If not, mm, it'll be close enough. It's been about 10 days since I did that last. So let's go ahead and open her up and take a look. Um, mostly every single day, I've just kind of zhushed her around. I really haven't opened her up any. I did once because it looked like it wasn't doing anything. Um, but it's fermenting along. She's doing quite nicely. And... Let me go ahead and show you what she looks like real quick. So, that is the rose petal wine. All the roses have uh, leached out almost all of the, the color. So it looks pretty. So we're just gonna rough rack it by using um, a strainer and just pulling out the petals and the uh, tea leaves. And then um, I'm just gonna 
chuck it into the demijohn. The smell does kind of have like a, a rosy smell to it, so maybe the flavor is rosy too. I don't know. <laughs> I've never had rose wine. I thought it was going to be interesting though, so all right. It's going to take me a minute to do this, so I'll be back in just a few. I've transferred into a clean Sanitized Demijohn. Look at that color though. It is a gorgeous pinky pinky color. My camera's still crooked. Dang it. Oh well. <laughs> so what we're going to do is um, take a specific gravity reading. Um, it is kind of on the higher side, but the initial fermentation that kind of produces a lot of the foamage and stuff like that is uh, done and over. So I'm not worried about it overflowing a bit. Um, so I think it'll be just fine. But it still will fermentate, so I don't have to worry about any uh, turning into you know vinegar or anything like that. So it's such a pretty, pretty pink color. All right, start to float now. So let's see, we. We're at 1.140, but I did add a little bit of water, so it's probably going to be skewed off a little bit. 1.064. So it has gone down a little bit, and even though I did put a little bit of uh, water in there, I don't think it's going to be that much of a huge difference. Maybe, you know, 20 points, maybe. But I'm going to pour a little bit in just so that I can get a taste of it. Pour that back in. And I'm going to put a lid on this, and we are going to put this where I normally put um, all my fermentations, and we'll check it back later. But let's take a taste of this. Let's see. It's not clear at all yet, but it's still a pretty, you know, pinky color. It does have that rose essence, though. Mmm. That does smell good. It's going to be good when it's done, I think, smelling-wise. It does kind of have that... It's kind of hard to explain, but it does have like the rose... Like a rose flavor. If you've ever had like um, rose water or something like that in like the, can like the candy... Um, Turkish Delights, the, they have the rose uh, rose water candy on that. It kind of has that same flavor. It's good. It's still a little on the sweet side, but it's not horribly sweet. But it needs to be worked on a little bit. But that is a nice flavor. It tastes like how a, a rose would smell. And then the after flavor is definitely still rosy. This is going to be nice, I think, once it's done. Ooh, I'm so happy I did this um, with the coloring. So, and perfect fit here. So, we're going to do that, and we will check back later. Today, we are checking in with the Rose Petal Mead. She's not ready yet. But we're definitely going to check in on her she's just to see how she's doing now i haven't looked at her or anything remember we had her covered to protect the coloring of the rose petals it's been um almost a month since we rough wrapped her let's see what she looks like Ooh, it's like a pinky orangey color that's cool looking I know it's kind of hard for you guys to see. So let's go ahead and get a specific gravity, and then we'll take a better look at her in the tube. She's cleared out really well. Well, I mean, there really wasn't a whole lot of stuff to deal with. Put that back on there. Now, I did use EC118, so she's going to probably be closer to dry. We can always back sweeten her if we need to. So, yeah, so she's at 16.27%. We did use the Lauvin EC118, so that gets up to like an 18%. Um, and she is on the dry side, so she's probably pretty close from using all of the sugar. 
So let me take a taste of her. We may be adding a little bit of sugar to this. Or just waiting. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to pour this back in because these have been sanitized. There's no point in wasting. Look at that color. It's like a peachy pink. Like a, almost like a, if you drink wines, which I hope you kind of do if you're watching the show. <laughs> it's like a rosé. It is absolutely gorgeous color. Can you see that? Wow. And it does smell like roses. It still has that light rose flavor to it. That is cool. Mmm. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. I'm going to give her about a half a cup of sugar. I don't want to give her a whole lot, but I want a little bit more sweetness to that. And so... Okay, this is um, a quarter of a cup. And yes, I know I'm gonna be stirring this up and everything and messing up the leaves, but she'll kinda straighten out. Here we go, let's do a final reading. Okay, that's got it up to 10.30, so that should give me plenty of residual sugars after She's fermented anymore, so let's hope so. <laughs> All right, so ooh, let's go ahead and cover her back up. I'm going to put her back where she has been fermenting for a while, and we'll check back with her in a little bit. Okay, so it's been about mm, 10 to 14 days since the last time we checked the uh, rose petal wine. So we're going to do another specific gravity and hopefully we'll be able to uh, rack her into bottles. We're also going to do a taste test too. So let's take a look at her. Mm. All right. Still that beautiful pinkish orangey kind of color. So very nice. Cleared out very well. So let's take a look and see if she did any more uh, fermentation from when we added some sugar, because it was on the dry side. Now, if you remember, it was uh, about 16.27%. So I don't think there's gonna be too much fermentation, because I believe we did uh, the EC1118, and that goes up to about 18%-ish of alcohol. So if we're on the money here, we should have a little bit left of sugar. So it shouldn't be too dry. At least I'm hoping not anyway. Try not to disturb any of these leaves either. Here we go. Let's put the lid back on her just in case. Alrighty, she looks like she's floating now. So we are looking at Looks like um, it's at 10.28, so she just dropped down just the two one hundredths of a point. So I'm thinking she's done in 10 days and only did that. I think she's done and ready to bottle. So let's go ahead and transfer this into a pitcher and then we will bottle this up. And I'll let you know what the specific gravity is in just a minute. Um, it was at 16.27, so it probably didn't go up much higher than that. So... Let's see here. Let me get this set up. We're also going to do a little taste test. So let me pour some out so I can taste this in a few minutes. There we go. I'm going to pour this into the pitcher because I don't want to disturb any leaves that we have. Siphon. Ooh, I almost dropped that. That was would have been bad. I got a stand for this, of course, because I'm short. <laughs> All 
All righty. Oh, I need a clippy clip. Okay. All right. Okay, you know how this goes. I'm going to just section this into this picture, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the wine transferred into our pitcher off the lease and completely. So we're going to be transferring into some wine bottles. Now, if you remember, I did say that the rose wine um, is reported to lose its color if the sunlight gets to it for a long period of time. So I've got some uh, dark bottles that I'm going to be putting them into. I've got a couple of clear ones for some leftovers if I need them, and I'll be drinking those fairly shortly. <laughs> but I do have a couple of small bottles that I wanted to give to a couple of friends, and then I have some dark colored bottles for a longer storage period. So let's get cracking on these bottlings. Alrighty, so if you remember the bottling wand, it's this wand right here. It's got the tip that's got the spring load to it. So when you push it down, the liquid flows. When you open it up, it closes. So it makes it easy for um, transferring from one bottle to another. So, and these are not so dark that I can't see where the liquid is coming to. So let's get cracking. All right, this is kind of difficult being one-handed. But I can get it. There we go. All righty. And we'll see you in just a little bit. Well, I managed three bottles, uh, big bottles, and two of the small ones. And I have some left over. Not enough for a bottle, so I'll be drinking that order. <laughs> so, the final ABV on this uh, rose petal wine ended up being 16.54% not too shabby and since it ended at 1028 it should be still on the little bit of a sweet side let's go ahead and give her a test i had to fill the glass up a little bit more you know so <laughs> all right so smell wise definitely on the uh, has a rosy scent to it but it's slightly changed a little bit it's uh i don't know how to describe it perfumey i guess i don't know Mmm, taste-wise, has that slight rosy taste to it, but it's changed slightly. It's not perfumey tasting, but it does have that perfumey smell. Um, even though it's at 16%, it doesn't really taste like very strong alcohol. Mmm, I think this will be really good cold. It's at room temperature now. I think a little slightly chilled might make it just really nice. I like it. This turns out gorgeously. This is like a pinky orange color, if you can kind of see. Clear, clear, clear. Um, and it is beautiful. Mmm. That one is fantabulous. Is that a word? <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully with some aging, it'll even be better. So this dark one is definitely going to be um, the aging ones. And then this clear one will be drinking wise. Um, and then these are my gifts to a couple of my friends. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Whoever lucky is enough to get it. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video from start to finish rose petal wine all in one video. I know it's a little bit longer. But I'm going to try to bring these every once in a while to you so that you can see from start to finish on these wines. And remember, it takes over a month or so to do these, so I'm not going to be able to do them every single time. But I think it's a nice change of pace from this and then break it down into several different parts. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching, and you guys have a great day. And enjoy that homemade wine if you're starting to make it. I trust you are making something. I've got several videos so you can find something. All right, see you next time. Bye.
turn her into my fermentation bucket, but 